commitment tends to last better in community. You were not designed to do this faith journey alone. Some of you are going to walk out of this conference so pumped up, so full of faith, speaking in tongues, calling fire down from heaven, but you're going to walk out into a cold, rainy world, and if you're all alone, guess what? That fire, it's going to burn out. But if you'll just make a conscious decision to say, you know what? I got to sit with the right people. Who I sit with matters. I need a crew. I need a click. I need some Jesus followers that are going to stick with me on this journey. Because I can see these guys. I can see Shadrach. Come on, guys. It's early in the morning. Shadrach, it's 5 a.m. I know. Come on. We're going to worship Jesus. Shadrach, I don't think Jesus is awake right now. Shut up, guys. We're going to worship. I can see Meshach. Come on. Let's pray against our enemies. Come on. Let's call fire down from heaven. I can see Abednego. Like, I don't know if I want to get up. They're like, come on, Abednego. We got this. And they were stoking the fire that was inside of each and every one of them. If we're not careful, we'll allow ourselves to live life unhealthy. We'll allow ourselves to live life isolated. We'll allow ourselves to live life all alone. And we'll come up against obstacles and when you're doing life all alone, the obstacles seem so much bigger when you're alone. It's funny, my wife and I, we live in a, a loft in downtown Miami, just across the bridge over here. And uh, it's like one big room. It's cool if, I come, if you come to my house, I'm like, hey, here's the tour. You're like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm like, all right, let's sit down. Yeah. And there's no closets in our house. And so uh, when we first moved in, we had to go, and we're balling on a budget. So we went to Ikea. And... Um, Praise God for Ikea, uh, except for the fact that you have to, you know, put those things together. And um, we bought these massive closets. They got these big mirrored doors, you know. And about four or five months into living in this apartment, those, those closet doors, they broke. And it was Don Cherie's closet door. Like, no longer could you move it back and forth. And to be honest with you, like, I'm not really, you know, <clears throat> gifted with the tools. <laughs> Shut up. And so, I'm, 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 this is a confession moment right now. For two years straight, we just lived with broken closet doors. Because I, I saw, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> two years. Don't you like reaching into the closet like, I can't find my shoes. Like, you're fine. Come on, suffer for the gospel. You know, like. About two weeks ago, two of my friends I do life with from Voo Church, they were over at my house and they're sitting on the couch and they go, hey Rich, you know your closet door's broken? I was like, really? They're like, oh yeah, it's broken. I was like, Phew. I was like, I don't know how to fix it. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm fine, I'm good with it. How many know you, you can't change that which you tolerate? How many of you know you get what you allow? I said, I said, it's broken. It's broken. We're good, though. Don Shree doesn't mind leaning in to the closet to find her shirt. She's fine. She's good. I said, I don't want to fix it. All of a sudden, one of my friends says, bro, I can fix it? I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, there is a God somewhere. <laughs> can I be honest with you? They went over the closet door, and in, in 15 minutes... In 15 minutes, they fixed my closet door. And I thought to myself, isn't that amazing? I've had the same problem for two years that could have been fixed in 15 minutes. I felt like the Lord wanted me to tell some people that tonight you've had a problem for three years, five years. But if you'll get the right people in your life, if you'll sit with the right people in 15 minutes, God can turn it around. It can be fixed if you get the right community around you. Come on, VU Conference. Make a little bit of noise tonight. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to live unhealthy. You don't have to live offended. You don't have to live broken. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you're free. Who are you sitting with? Because who you sit with will dictate who you become like. I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because every time their name is mentioned, it's mentioned in the group. If we're going to have even in faith, we've got to sit 
But secondly, after you sit, you have to stand. I love that story of Shadrach, Meshach. The, 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 The music goes off. Can you imagine like what that would have been like that day? Like everybody bows down, but you just look up and they're Shadrach, you know, <laughs> not bowing down. There's Meshach like, mm, I wish you would, devil. <laughs> There's a Ben who's like, he's like, Ben goes like, can we curtsy at least? Maybe we should curtsy, you know, like. <laughs> you want to talk about going public with your faith? You want to talk about being a city on hill? You want to talk about by not letting your light be hidden? These guys are a picture of it. But yet you say, how do you take such a public stand? You'll never go public if you don't first go private. Before you can go public, you've got to go private. Because you're just reading the end of the story. Even if, what a climactic moment. In this real moment of pressure, their most triumphant words come out. But how? It's because this wasn't the first time they ever took a stand for God. They had been taken stand after stand after stand. In fact, the Bible says they were taken out of their homeland. They are slaves. I want someone to catch this because you keep coming up with all the reasons as to why you can't flourish. You keep coming up with all the reasons as to why you can't be great. These were slaves living in a secular world. And they show up on the scene and they're brought into the king's chambers because they possess some amazing qualities. And right off the bat, they are put on the king's diet. But these men, as Jewish boys, they were under the law. So they could not drink wine. They could not eat certain types of meat. So they came to one of the king's officials and they said, hey, let's make a deal. Why don't you give us 10 days eating the way our God tells us to eat, praying the way our God tells us to pray. We're going to only eat vegetables and we're only going to drink water. Let's see what we look like after those 10 days. They were taking a stand. Nobody was recording it, but they were taking a stand. The Bible says after 10 days, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they had so far exceeded all of the other men that were in the king's chambers that they were automatically brought into the king's court And from that day forward, this is what the Bible says, that they were ten times better than all of the king's magicians, astrologers, and advisors. Doesn't surprise me one bit. You're a Christian. You're a follower of Jesus. I think you ought to be the best employee at your job. I don't care where you work at. You're going to be the best. Why? Because not only are you talented, you're also kind. Not, all, not, not only are you skilled, you're humble. You got it all. There is no doubt in my mind that as believers of Jesus, we should always rise to the top. But we have to be willing to take a private stand before we'll ever take a public stand. Come on, for